Hola bandidos, what's up, let's get up my brother cops, <laughs> ladrones panchones, como estamos? Welcome to Mel's Magic, this is episode 6 of season 2, and I hope you're good, I'm super good, I'm sipping on some Glühwein, I love Glühwein, and feeling chilled in Javier, I hope you're good, but uh, one sec. Vale. So, <clears throat> episode six, crazy. I was thinking of something I said in my in one of my previous episodes of season two. I don't know if it was episode two or three, where I said something like, this is not a performance, I just want to be me. <laughs> well, I want to autocorrect that. And obviously this is a bit of a performance, which is not a bad thing per se. I guess what I meant was that I don't want to pretend so we always perform. I mean, I'm here talking to you, talking to me also. It's a kind of monologue into the, <laughs> into the ether. But um, I guess, yeah, it's not a performance. I am not, I, I don't want to be ingenuous. I want to speak authentically. Voila, that's that issue solved. You know, these episodes help me because I look back on them sometimes and they kind of file my process of thinking and journeying. And it's not like I ever or we ever reach the final destination. No, this is an ongoing process. It started way back before we were born and it's going to go beyond our physical death. So why not enjoy the ride? That's what I'm telling myself nowadays. Let's sit back center ourselves in the here and now, trust, surrender, flow. Don't have control over everything anyway at the end of the day. And a big issue that weighs on us or kind of just causes tension is this inability to let go, to just accept, to just breathe in, breathe out and go with the flow without knowing necessarily all of the answers, without knowing what the entire journey will look like. And to be honest, wouldn't it be boring if we would already know where we would end up, really? You know, life is supposed to be an adventure. And there's always twists and turns. I mean, if you think about your favorite movie or your favorite novel, I just finished one German one about um, the Camino de Santiago, Jakobsweg, für euch Deutschen. It's about this, uh, this German comedian who went on, on a pilgrimage to Compostela, Santiago Compostela. And it's a bit of a biography of his real trip, his month-long trip. And he didn't know what he was... I mean, he knew that his goal was to ar arrive in Santiago, but he didn't know what, he, what kind of challenges or what kind of people he would meet and incur. And it turned out to be this fantastic adventure where life brought him so many lessons and experiences that he could have never have fathomed or imagined. So anyway, point being... All is well, you're good, you've come a long way, we've come a long way. We should look back every now and then and see how far we've come and, you know, relax into the notion that there's always more. I mean, we're always going to unfold further, we're always going to expand further. We are part of creation, gosh, this is hair. Uh, we are part of creation, i.e. it's an evolution that doesn't stop, you know. We will not stop growing and... Our version tomorrow is completely different maybe from our version today. And that's fine. But we don't have to jump ahead and try and be that future version all the time. Let's just enjoy our present selves. Vale? So that's my little intro spiel. On another note, I wanted to tell a little bit of a story based on cards I've pulled over the last, I can't remember, days and weeks. And of course, I'm telling the story through my own filter of experience but as we said that Nina Simone or Anais Nin the deeply personal becomes universal and although we have maybe maybe the details of our lives are different and the constellation of our life of our lives are different at the end of the day you know we share the same hero's journey we are part of an archetypal cosmic journey so we're not alone in what we experience those really existential fundamental human experiences we all of us go through you know be it loss or 
um, love, you know, those really milestones of experience we all go through. So who knows, maybe this little story will resonate with you, vale? So let's start. The, part, the card I pulled a while ago was justice in reverse. So the meaning of the card is quite obvious. No, there's, if you pull this card, it's basically justice coming, whether that be some balancing out of energies, some kind of um, maybe apology coming your way, or some so-called, although I don't want to use this dichotomy or these polarized terms, but some kind of wrong being righted energetically. Male? So in the reverse, it means, well, maybe you've been waiting for this, for justice being served to you, but it never arrived and you got hung up on it, literally hung up on reverse justice. And that maybe left you out in the cold for a long, long time. Now, this is the five of pentacles here. And if you look closely, you see these two figures, you know, one is limping and, you know, very kind of um, destitute figures outside in the cold. And there's like a bit of um, what looks like, um, como se llaman? Vitrina in, in the in church windows, colored stained glass window, where you see those five pentacles. So they're obviously out in the cold of this maybe sanctuary. Yeah. So justice wasn't served. Maybe you felt out in the cold for a long time. Maybe you were hoping for some kind of offer to come your way or some kind of page of cups in reverse means new inspiration to come or something to help you move forward and approach life again with a more childlike spirit. Yeah. So we're going back to this notion of being somehow stuck and out in the cold. And maybe you realized, it's the Eight of Cups, that although you had invested your time and energy into something, be it a relationship, a project, a behavior, it could be virtually anything, but something you invested your time and energy in, you realized after, after trying to build it up that it just wasn't worth your investment and that the time has come for you to take your cup. The cups in the Tao mean fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, and literally walk away and forge your own path. Albeit it meaning that you had to stand up for yourself and walk that path alone. We see here, you know, the moon, I'm not sure if it's the sun or the moon or both watching over this scene and maybe holding some kind of secrets that were never revealed. Yeah, again, related to the page of cups in reverse, this is the eight of wands in reverse and the eight of wands, the wands are, are to do with communication. So again, maybe there was some kind of communication or clarification or explanation that you have been waiting on that just didn't arrive. And it's super frustrating because you were, you were counting on this news or message or communication to help you understand the situation you were in and to help you move forward with clarity. So this non-communication left you with a lot of confusion. And because you were left in confusion and out in the cold, <laughs> you got stuck in devil energy. Now the devil energy means obsession, going round and round in your head, obsessing about this situation, this person, this unresolved issue and being in turmoil basically because you were not able to find peace and clarity for yourself. So you got stuck in this devil energy, this toxic loop in your head and your emotions, which just wouldn't let you go. And the sun in reverse, which basically dimmed your shine. Sun upright is you in your full glory. Sun, sun upright is actually Leo energy. I'm a Leo. So in the reverse, it means something was dimming your shine. And... It was this obsession 
that you couldn't let go of because of this lack of clarity, this lack of forward movement in a particular situation, be it romantic or um, maybe a relationship with your family or your loved ones or a friendship or a situation at work where you're just stuck and you felt like, hey, something is dimming my shine and preventing me to shine fully. But as time passed, you know, three of wands here, you realize that, well, you know, I have to look out into the horizon again. I have to move on with my life. I need to look for new harbors to dock my ships in. I have everything I need. I have the three wands, the three pillars of my self-confidence, my self-worth, my self-love. I have everything I need to conquer and explore new horizons. Maybe that clarification or that peace that I was after is something only I can give myself. And in giving that to myself, I reclaim my power. Yeah, put these two cards together. Got the Three of Wands and the Three of Cups. So we, we pull these cards in the last one of the last episodes, but a part of the story here where part of moving on and exploring new horizons is finding resonance with people where your energy is appreciated, where you no longer have to feel like you're out in the cold or where you no longer feel... Um, treated in an unjust or unfair manner where people reciprocate your energy and literally build a new community with like-minded and um, souls that resonate with you. We spoke about resonance a lot, no? And um, you know, in this journey towards finding this soul group or this new horizon or new new atmosphere of or, or, or collaborative or community where your energy is appreciated you may feel that at times here's the the mother of of wands also queen of wands in the in the conventional tarot you may feel that sometimes a bit like this rattlesnake where you're very protective of your energy you're very protective of the newfound wisdom and insights that you have um, gained for yourself and that like pearls or like jewels that you dug out from your darkness and unconscious from all the pain or suffering that you've gone through you have um, these eggs that you're incubating and these eggs can mean anything I mean an egg is a symbol of new life new projects new ideas new cycles in life and new parts, aspects of yourself. And they still might they might still be fragile. So you you have all the right after all you've gone through to be very protective of what you're incubating. And um, <laughs> here's the five of wands in reverse. You may also feel tired of getting caught up in not only outer circumstances where you're in conflict with people maybe where in the conflict you had to fight very assertively to stand your ground to voice your truth and to basically mm, individuate meaning to um, discern which is my voice where do I stand in relation to this person or this group be it your family your friends your community you know who, who am I actually? You know, it's almost like trying to discern where you stand in relation to all these other people in your other people in your life. Or it can also mean you're you're done and tired of fighting with all these voices in your head, which we all have. You now it's very important that we discern which voice is talking. Is it the big critic? Is it society's expectations? Is it God knows? You know, my mother talking. Is it? a mentor who I value but who I no longer resonate with. So basically, you have released yourself. You're no, you're no longer in the quarrel. In reverse, it means you have released yourself from this inner or outer conflict. And 
you are now, this is the Queen of Cups, I'm oh, sorry, mirror reversed, Queen of Cups in reverse. In the upright, the Queen of Cups is very much about, um, symbolizes this loving, nurturing aspect we all have in ourselves, very giving and caring, mother-like energy, which we usually, when everything flows, want to give out you know, to others. In the reverse, it might mean after this quarrel or conflict, after trying your best to, to assert yourself, what is needed now is actually you not giving out to the world, but nurturing yourself, you know, going inwards and trusting that inner voice that distinguishes you from the group or the masses. And um, in doing so, in going inside and accepting your feelings, positive or negative, in holding space for them, in trying to have curiosity and compassion and investigate well, where, does, where do these feelings come from? Um, you may realize that Seven of Pentacles in reverse, Seven of Pentacles is all about where you invest your time and energy again. And you might realize that, well, maybe a bit like in the, in the Eight of Cups, maybe you invested your time and energy in the wrong places or that you were stuck in a situation where it, the energy just wasn't reciprocated or the investment was not returned. So it's okay to go inwards now and accept, I wouldn't call it failure, but accept maybe that you ended up in a dead end and that it's just simply time to turn the page and move your energy elsewhere where it is reciprocated. Now, this quote-unquote wrong investment wasn't a mistake. It was a lesson, maybe. It was a lesson that you can take forward. And because you see it as a lesson, the Mother of Swords is similar to the Queen of Swords, you are now in a position where you're very discerning. You're no longer overruled by your emotions. You may be a very sensitive and emotional person, and you usually put yourself out there, wear your heart on the sleeve, are easily trusting with other people. But maybe after this experience and feeling hurt by this injustice and unfair behavior and, and having spent all this time out in the cold and being maybe unfairly treated, you've had enough of wrong investments. You've turned into the, the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is... Yes, as I said, she doesn't, she's not overly emotional, she's not cruel, but she's discerning and she's aligned, she's centered, she can see through things, she can see through people's intentions, she can pierce people's masks, persona, and see what their underlying or sense what their underlying motivation is. And that's a very good position to be in. Now, maybe the danger is that we get too stuck in this energy where we literally, you know, we can, we often get in the way of our own blessings, no? So maybe now you're in this position, well, I'm not putting up with any more bullshit. And you literally take the sword and cut out any opportunities that are coming your way. Or maybe, you know, any well-meaning people who, who do resonate with you and who do want to give and take and who do want to reciprocate your energy. So just... A little warning, don't get too stuck in the Queen of Swords. Have your sword, but be discerning and keep that mind and heart in balance. You don't want either or to go overboard. Yeah. And this is the Six of Swords, Six of Swords in reverse. So here in the usual tarot, Six of Swords is moving into calmer waters after a dispute. And here we see this girl with her suitcase on the ocean and three crows pulling her and three crows in the background. Maybe it takes um, a lot of honesty and... Yeah, it takes, on it takes being honest with yourself to accept that the best thing to do is move away from a situation that no longer serves us, although it hurts, although we did invest, although we 
did want the outcome to be different, although it was a wish that you wanted fulfilled. So in the reverse, this card means that it's hard, it's hard to move on. But trust life, trust that there will be spirits. You know, I see these three crows as spirit guides. Trust that these spirits guides, they're pulling you forward. The flow of life is pushing you forward. And although it's hard, trust that everything is working out for the best of, for you and that you will find, or let's say better, attract what is truly meant for you, what is truly nourishing for your soul. Male? Trust the journey. And the last card is the world. 21 is the world. So if you go... If you let yourself be carried, if you stop resisting the push forward um, of the flow of life, the river of life, you will realize that a whole new cycle, the world means the completion of a cycle, is at bay and that a whole new world will open up to you. New horizons, new people, new love, new opportunities, new abundance. Everything is just waiting for you to let go, to be present, to trust to surrender and flow. Vale? So that was my little story to myself and to you. Perhaps it resonates. Let me know in the comment box. And today is Saturday the 9th of January. It's beautiful weather here. I will continue sipping my Glühwein and I'll be thinking of my next storyline for episode 7, probably tomorrow. Vale. Y con esto, alles Gute. Ich wünsche euch ein schönes Wochenende, schönen Sonntag, nee, schönen Samstag. Un sábado muy lindo. Estén donde estén. Je vous souhaite un samedi très joli. <laughs> I need to practice my French. Y nada, nos vemos uh, next Mel's Magic. Vale. If you enjoy this episode, please like, like, share and subscribe. And I'm open to any of your feedback. Con esto, saludos. Ciao.